I'll give a brief introduction on four points of order. The rules, the articles, debate, and voting. And then we'll proceed. The rules. Robert's rules of order are the basic rules of order for this meeting, except where Vermont state law takes precedence. You, members of the assembly, cannot change Vermont law, but by unanimous consent or by a two-thirds vote, you can change Robert's rules. You have the right to challenge the rulings made by the moderator. Please tell me if you think that I have ruled improperly. My job is to facilitate the will of the voters. Point two, the articles. An article must be moved and seconded, then stated by the moderator, before it is under consideration and debate may begin. An article may have only one amendment at a time associated with it. And likewise, that amendment may have only one amendment at a time associated with it. We'll keep track of that as we go. With respect to an article, an amendment may not change its subject or its objective or the means of achieving the objective. Point three, debate. All motions, remarks, and discussion must be addressed to the moderator. I will do my best to recognize you in the order that you raised your hands. After being recognized, please stand up and state your name. We need this information for the minutes. If there's no objection, I see a hand raised, and I will, I will take that question after reading the introduction. After being recognized, please stand and state your name. We need this information for the minutes. If there's no objection, speeches will be limited to two minutes. However, speakers can ask for permission from the assembly to speak longer. Your speeches must be confined to the merits of the question. You may not engage in personal attacks on a member of the assembly or their motives. After you've spoken once on an issue, you may not speak on it a second time until every other member of the assembly has had an opportunity to speak on it once. You may be allowed to speak a third time by unanimous consent or a two-thirds vote. Debate may be cut off by a motion to call the question with a second of that motion and then a two-thirds vote. But you must be recognized to make this motion. In other words, you can't just yell out, call the question. Four, point number four, voting. A vote by division of the House may be called by one voter after a voice vote. A vote by paper ballot may be called by seven voters after a voice vote or after a vote by division of the House. Any vote that is counted will be counted by tellers, in this case including the town clerk, justices of the peace, and members of the board of civil authority. Tellers will count the votes and prepare a report which the town clerk will announce 
and present to the moderator who will declare the results of the vote. Reconsideration of an article is permitted until the point at which the assembly begins consideration of another article. A motion for reconsideration must be made by a member who voted with the prevailing side. So yes, I will need to ask you how you voted. At this time, I ask those who are not registered voters in the town of Woodbury, please raise your hands. If you're not a registered voter, raise your hand. The meeting, the meeting was warned to begin at 10 o'clock. So we began a few minutes after 10. I see no hands raised, so uh, just getting on the, the point of registered voters in the town of Woodbury. Ginger. We still have a lot of people waiting to check in because we talked for a few minutes or something and we didn't have to do Okay. By unanimous consent, if there's no objection, we will wait to allow the people that are lined up on the stairs to check in and join the meeting. I hear no objection. So yes, we will take a short recess and allow the voters on the stairs to check in and join the meeting. We'll bring the meeting back to order. Um, for any, any folks who have arrived recently, uh, I need to ask if there are any non-registered voters in the town of Woodbury here. Okay. And, uh, okay, thank you, thank you. Um, and if there, I'll just repeat briefly, if there are any questions about uh, information, those may be asked as uh, requests for information. Uh, you may challenge the rulings of the moderator. And if you have a, a point of order about the procedure, you may raise a point of order. Or if you have a question about procedure, you may raise a question, a parliamentary question, we call it a procedural question. So. With that said, okay, we will begin. So we have two articles on the agenda. Uh, one main article and the second would be to adjourn. So article one, shall the town appropriate up to $85,000 to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department, Inc. for the purpose of financing the cost for construction of a new fire and emergency operations center at a total cost of $1,300,000. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 1? I see a gentleman here, I recognize you, Monty Shatney. I just want some clarity. Uh, you said $85,000, are you going to say that a one-time deal, or is that the life of the loan? It's not really clear. OK, we have, we have a, a request for information. Is there someone that they could answer that? Yes, please identify yourself and... Chris I'm the President and Assistant Chief of the Fire Department. That amount will be recurring for 20 years in my construction bond. So you have $5,000 every year for 20 years. For 20 years. Right. Yeah. 
Yes, I recognize. Diana, do you like to move the question before, I mean, move the article before we start the question? Isn't okay, so, okay. So I move that the article be approved. Okay. We have a motion made by Diana to move Article 1. Is there a second? I recognize Sarah. Would you please stand and state your name? Sarah Van Hoff, seconds. Okay, so we have a motion made by Diana Paduzzi, seconded by Sarah Van Hoff to move Article 1. I'll restate it. Shall the town, shall the town appropriate up to $85,000 to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department, Inc., for the purpose of financing the cost for construction of a new fire and emergency operations center at a total cost of $1,300,000. Is there any debate? Okay, yes, I recognize you. Please stand and state your name. My name is Heather Winkler. Heather Winkler. Okay, so we're, we're voting to spend $85,000 do we have to vote again next year, number one? Number two, if, we, if the building program starts and we vote it down next year, what happens? That's my question. I recognize Chance Payette. Thank you. So yes, the answer is it will have to be voted on every single year. We cannot commit as a volunteer fire department. We're not part of the municipality. We cannot commit to the whole amount today. We can only do it on a year-to-year -year basis, and we can't you know, protect the whole. If we started the project and the voters turned it down next year, then we would not have $85,000 to make a payment. So if it becomes a default project, the people will be rebuilt by the bank. I recognize you. Please stand and state your name. Laura Murphy. I was just Murphy. wondering what up to 85. I just said that's not clear. Uh, when you say up to 85, what is that? It's, oh, please raise your hand. Recognize the uh, chair. I'll just actually, keep it up in the air for now. <laughs> <laughs> um, chance is spoken. Without objection, you could speak again, unless someone would like to speak now. Just, yes. Would it be easier for us if we came up to the front so people don't have to keep turning around? You could do that, oh, yes. Okay. Yep. <coughs> Can I just remind everyone, we've got, we've got, uh, we've got there some man, noise up one. here, so when called upon to speak, please rise and, and speak loudly. So, Chats, you are, are recognized to speak. Thank you. So the question was, why does it say up to $85,000? Because the $1.3 million that we're looking for will be affected by the interest rate at the time. Because we get the 1.3 as a construction loan from the bank, and then once it's completed, it gets sold off into the bond market. At that point in time, depending on what the interest rate is, would determine what our yearly payment is. It, it was at the low point two years ago, around 81,000. It's closer to the 85 now. That's why we put up to 85,000 to allow that fluctuation from year to year. That answer your question, Mark? Yes, thank you. I see a hand raised in the back. Yes, I recognize you. Please stand and state your name. Jim uh, Smith. Is, so say that this class is today and next year, Five years down the road, it doesn't. The bank repossesses it. They, what happens if they, where do they put a lien hole, a lien hole on for the fire truck? Where do they put a lien on the fire truck, the firehouse? Is it, you guys still own Yeah, the, the lien from the bank. Okay, we'll, we'll do it. We can move, we can move back and forth like this without objection. We'll make it efficient. 
Without objection, Chance will answer, yeah? I'm not very good at raising my hand, sorry. All oh, right, I'll look, look over then. I'll look over. Uh, well, the answer is they put a lien on that building. Uh, what else? I mean, there's going to be something else. Why would there be something else? Oh, excuse me, just a lot, a lot of chance to answer. If you want to follow up, you can raise your hand. We're asking so keep for it orderly. Order. We're asking for a loan for a piece of property. Their lien would be on that piece of property. If we don't pay for that piece of property, they would take such piece of property. Just like if I didn't pay for my car loan, they would take my car. They wouldn't take my car and my house and my pool and Chuck's car. They'd take my car. <laughs> Paul, Paul said he wants my car. I recognize this woman in the back. Please state your name. Anne-Marie Joaquin. Uh, the question was, if, if I heard it correctly, are you implying that the property is worth $1.3 million? Right. Yeah? Without objection, Chance? Yes, the property would be worth $1.3 million. That's what the opinion of probable cost was rich up as. Uh, construct the construction costs. Sorry. I, I, I first rec see it. Saw a gentleman with his hand raised. Yes? Would you like to speak? Oh, pardon me. I recognize. Okay. Um, I believe Anne Marie had her hand up first. Without objection, she could speak again. So I'm just confused. Because if I were to get a loan from a home, at the present time, I'm only asking for my property that's worth a certain value to get that loan. You're saying, in answer to this gentleman's question, that the $1.3 million would be, the, the only mean of it would be the property. In order for that to happen, that piece of land in the center of Woodbury needs to be worth $1.3 million before you get the loan. Is that correct? Okay. So, so without objection, so, uh, without objection, Paul Cerruti. So the, the property is oh. worth about $100,000, which was donated to us. The, the, the anticipated loan would be based on the value of the construction of the commercial property that we would be building. That's how they do this type of loan. So. And it, we've already dealt with the banks, and they're okay with that. Does that help out? Yes. Thank you. I recognize this gentleman. Please state your name. Uh, Peter Phelps. Um, it's my understanding that Callis has offered to spend a 30% of, of this project. The fire department has, doesn't want to accept that money for, for reasons I'm not clear of. But I think this is a significant issue in regards to uh, relieving some of the tax burden on Woodbury. Uh, um, it will very much affect how I vote. Thank you. Can you repeat the question? Can repeat Can you repeat Peter's remarks? Yeah. Okay. Peter? Um, the town of Calus has offered to pay 30% of the cost of this fire. The fire department has, uh, that does not want to accept that. My question is why, because that would be a substantial relief for the delivery tax payers if that 30% was paid by the house. I'm going to ask you why is this is uh, an issue. Uh, any, other, any other debate? Okay. Um, I recognize the gentleman in the back. Please state your name. I'm sorry? Okay. The question hasn't been responded to that. Okay, there was a question. Okay. Okay. I will I will pause. I will recognize you next and we'll answer this question to inform the debate going ahead. So if there's no objection, Chance will answer the question that Peter asked. Thank you. So for starters, uh, not to be argumentative, but we've never been offered 30% of this cost by the town of Calais. So. so we have not received that offer first. Second, 
The reason why we went with Woodbury is this is a Woodbury property, which Woodbury, the town of Woodbury, would inherit if something were to happen to the fire department. And three, we've watched the last few 10, 12 years of this same process going on in East Montpelier and the amount of meetings for the select boards and the fire departments and both towns is tremendous. I'm not saying we're not going to charge down the road for this building. What I'm saying is if Cal is backed out of their contract in five years, the town of Woodbury would have to pay for the full amount. It's easier today to ask you for the full amount and deal with this moving forward. But we have not received an offer of 30%. Okay, I, I recognize the gentleman in the back. Yes, please state your name. Lynn Gallison. Lynn Gallison. Uh, I started off with, I've been here 60 years. There's 50% to 60% of the people in this room I don't recognize. They're going to finance it for 20 years. I think you'll find at the end of that time, say the last three or four years of that, no, this, this room is going to change its physical. What happens if we get two-thirds of that building up front and the last three or four years they decide they're not interested in it because it's a whole different clientele of people living in this town. That's a big deal any way you look at it. You're talking one year or two years, but what happens at the end of uh, 15 years when you've gotten who knows how many hundreds of thousands invested in it and the next thing you have to do it every year, what happens when the last five years aren't a finance? You're left with nothing? I recognize this gentleman. Please state your name. Alan Phelps. I think that's a great point. Thank you. Who's going to make this down the road? On the flip side, I also think about this as being a major investment in the town. Will it trap people potentially here? You know, it could create a more attractive place to be for people that are here or want to come here. That's just a comment on that. Not my problem. Could I ask another question related to it earlier? No. You may continue your remarks yep. okay. within two minutes. Um, to the point of uh, the, the, the cow. I don't want to be interrupted, but how come I didn't get an answer to my question? Oh, sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll allow him to finish, and if there's an answer to the question, we'll get to that. Yes. Not really. <laughs> well, I get the floor and remember. Okay, well, I got one more question about the cow. So it sounds like we're not. They've not offered to pay for any of it. And it sounds like even if they had, that wouldn't be something you're interested in. I think there's a reasonable answer to that. Is there, there fees, if you will, I'm not sure what you call it, but the, whatever they pay up for, for your services, will that go up potentially because of this? And that, I, I sort of heard that answer a little bit, and I think that could reconcile that question a little bit. Like, if in some ways they're, they're paying for sort of an enhanced service. Okay, I, I'm going to stay here. I'm sensing in this debate that there are questions, many questions addressed to the, to the fire department. So I will, I will attempt after each remark, after each speech, to see if it's a question and then close it up here without objection. Okay, so in order, um, in, or, in order, answering Mr. Gallison's question first. So I'll, I'll uh, try to answer your question then. Paul, okay. You're right. We're not knowing who's going to be here in 15 years. I don't even know if I'm going to be here in 15 years. I can't tell you if I'm going to be here tomorrow. Um, this is an investment in the community that is direly needed by the fire department. Um, I was just on the select board for the last three years. We have loans on other things. Um, we're always at risk if you disapprove a budget and you don't make a payment on something. It's just like anything else. So uh, although they were approved by a vote which could commit future meetings, if you they didn't approve the town budget, you're in the same boat. You are always at risk of that, so I can't predict that and then I get the best I can do. I know that's an issue always. If we have some truck payments, it's the same way. If they just shoot our budget down, that's the way it is. That's fairly good, as best I can do with that. I know. Yeah, I got it. I don't disagree with your. Your, your, your what I'm getting at is how you 
how you plan to finance it and take care of it. Because there's no way after 10 years if you've invested that much, if we've the town has invested that much in it, there's no way in the world you're ever going to get in the way the economy, who knows how that works. We, we agree. It's just going to, it's, it's a risk moving forward, but I, I believe it's an investment the town needs to make to keep the fire service efficient and solvent. Um, and as far as dealing with, with Calis, we've always felt that it's a better approach moving forward to get the building built, and then they always paid based on operating costs. Our approach would be to go after operating costs, and this debt would become part of operating costs. So that's our anticipation. That's what we'd like to do. And then it's Woodbury's property that we don't have a whole bunch of people getting into the front end because of that. Talking to the East Montpelier Select Board, it was a very bad experience and a very bad deal. They just said, don't do it. That was, that was the information that we got. The approach we're taking is the approach that we felt was better. Our money would stay the same. No. I mean, I can't control any of those things. All I can do is put the need, like, we need to buy a town truck or we need to buy something. We're always at a risk of that. We're just in the same boat. Uh, we're just in an unusual circumstance. I guess it's not that unusual for the state of Vermont. A lot of smaller fire departments are private, nonprofit corporations. There's a number of East Montpelier, but there's a whole bunch of other towns that are like this. And I wasn't here when they did it, so I don't know why I can't defend for that, why it's that way, but that's just the way it is. Okay. I'm going to state here some of the explanations from the fire department may exceed two minutes. Sorry. No, 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 but. If there's, if there's an objection to that, please raise a point of order. Otherwise, I believe that in the interest of the meeting and information, it's important that they finish the explanation. So if there is objection, please raise a point of order. I recognize the gentleman here. Please state your name. Mike McGuinn, and following up on Peter Pelzer's statement, I think how a lot of us will make a determination on how we're voting on the, on the article is based on the fact that everybody paid his own fair share. And it doesn't appear that Callis, at this point, is going to ask to pick up any part of this, that it all falls on Woodbury. And, but yet, they are recipients of a substantial amount of responses from this fire department. So I, I guess my question is, how does the people of Woodbury swallow that big pill of picking up the whole tab when Catalyst is not being asked to pick up a portion of that based on the number of responses we make to Catalyst? And that's my question. Okay, without objection, Chance will respond. Sorry, I'll try to remember to raise my hand. No, uh, <laughs> I'm going to come back and forth if I sense a question. I, I, I yeah. don't know how to answer that question, Mike, because I'm not sure how to tell people to swallow the pill. However, what we're saying is that Callis will be asked to put some of the bill down the road. We're asking the town of Woodbury to support the Woodbury Fire Department with its building located in the town of Woodbury. We, we, just, gave, we just gave the explanation, or Paul did, let me rephrase that, that we would be looking to add this onto our operational costs, which they do pay 30% of. That's where, that's where we would see Calus putting their input into this. Every year when we bill the operating costs, that's where that would come from. Without objection, uh, come back to Mike, Mr. McGlynn. My question is, down the road, if Catalyst decides it's not going to pick up the 30%, then we are totally committed to picking up the entire bill. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Is there a contract? There, there are contract down, and they can back out any time they want to, and it would be extremely unbeneficial for them. They do receive you know, small yeah. services. We have a lot of support in Catalyst. When they voted this year, we got almost 90% on, on our votes. We do get a lot of support. They see a lot of service from us. So I don't anticipate them ever backing out of this contract. It would cost them a lot of money to create their own fire department. I see, I see a hand raised in the back. Uh, this would be the second remark. Without objection, Alex Peltz. I, I can, I can pass. OK. Um, the next hand I saw raised was Mr. Shatney. Uh, I, I reckon. The question, the 1.3 million uh, when was that 
when you get that number. Okay, I'll come, come to chance. That, that OPC objection. was redone in December of 2021. So that, so that number, you're going to go in, is going to double. So well, the, it doesn't matter what the number comes to because you're only approving $1.3 million. We can't spend more than $1.3 million. Now, we thought the same thing, Monty, to be honest with you, because we did the OPC last year for the vote, and it was 1.2. And we thought when we went back in for this next round, we were going to see substantial increases, having it been over a year. And it was only a little over 100000 more than what we saw at that time. I can't predict what the economy is going to do moving forward, um, but this is not an open-ended check. This is $1.3 million, and that's what we have to build the station based on, on the OPC. Without objection, um, come to Monty, unless you'd like to speak first. Okay, come to Monty and then we're well, going to My concern would be, uh, so if this gets approved today, when would you be breaking ground? I mean, I know that, and, so, and, and, and if you are you know, this year, building supplies have doubled. Um, Can you answer that question? Okay. Without objection, we'll answer the question, then come to the next speaker. I'm going to okay. back here answer. We have stopped trying to get permits, access permits, because they all have a lifespan. So what would happen this year is we would engage with the bank to get the finance, which we've already started, but again, it's been stopped because we haven't had the approval to do anything. Uh, we would continue down that road. Now, we may, in fact, discover that it's not going to get be able to begin construction till next spring. That's potentially possible. But we will have to live within the constraints of the budget that you all approve. That's just the way it is. We can't exceed the amount that's approved. Um, you know, we're all living into the same situation that uh, you have to when you're borrowing money and trying to build something. You're paying $25 for a two by six. So it just, we'll have to live within those constraints and based on what we get for, uh, just in the construction work, we're looking at a uh, 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 design build firm to do it, to save a lot of upfront costs for the town. It saves a lot of money. So we'll know once it goes out to bid, whether they're gonna go to start this year, we're gonna have to wait till next year. And, and I know another question that was asked, I'll just answer. Uh, any money is going to be held that isn't spent and only spent on either building this project or the debt service of this project will not be spent on anything else. Does that help you? you recognize this gentleman. Please state your name. To, uh, the $85,000 a year being voted on for the next 20. Now, will this be a separate item or will this be in the budget for the town? No, no, it won't be in the budget for the town. Sorry. Nope. <laughs> Without sorry. objection, take it away. Sorry about that. No, no. Cool, like, I really am sorry. No. So your, the answer to your question, Chuck, is it will not be part of the town budget. It will be our budget, the fire department's budget. We will submit it yearly. Um, what we're planning on doing is making it part of our operational budget, like I said before. So it wouldn't be a separate article that's left hanging out there. We're going to combine this all into our operational budget once the bond is approved and we have that exact dollar amount, <coughs> that would become part of our operational budget. So you'd see it in that part. Right. Sure. Without objection, Paul will add a remark. And just if people didn't understand our budgeting process with Callis, they pay a third of operating. So by placing it into operating, that's where our negotiation can start with that. And you all get to visit this every single year. So if we're not performing to what we said we would, we can be held accountable for this. So it's not like it's a free blank check for the next 20 years. If you don't like what you see happening next year, that conversation is had again at town meeting. We, of course, are going to do our best to perform as we've spoken. Without objection, Chuck has and, followed. Anybody talk to the town accountants about if you roll this in? So you, your operating budget's going to be getting you $200,000 for the year. Has anybody talked to them about an increase like that? We did have, uh, we had one of the select board members and a member at large from their community that were actually on the committee that helped us through the process of looking at the original building plans. Um, so they're fully aware of the cost. They're fully aware of what our plan is. Uh, will they vote it up or down? I can't tell you that any more than I can tell you if this body will have voted up or Historically, down. Historically, they've always approved our article. I know they have, but. 
pretty substantial. I got you. Yeah. All along. yeah. I wish it cost less, but uh, yeah, I know it doesn't. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, that, that's yep. not the point. I'm just okay. hoping that somebody has gone to the trouble yeah. to make sure, well, as sure as it could possibly be, that they're going to be on board and they're not going to go back out and go to Worcester or Plainfield or somebody like that. We've done everything we could okay. to this point. All right. There any uh, yes, I recognize Ms. Winkler. Uh, I am sorry I didn't come to your open house. Uh, I, I'm sure you looked into this, but did you look into renovating or standing up the existing building? Without objection, Chancellor Paul. So the answer is yes. The, the the land we sit on is only eight feet on either side, so there's no room to expand there. Our problem is the building's too narrow and too short, so there's really no opportunity to renovate it. In this plan, if you remember, in 2014, we approved a study, and our study said we need 7,000 square feet for our needs, and we, we've been working off that. In 2014, we withdrew that article because it was too expensive and apparently was in the wrong location by what most people felt. The village study committee, I may go over two minutes, but stop me. The village study committee happened after that where we got people to say we wanted us to be in the village. So we were able to, to have this property that we have now donated to us. We're anticipating building around a 4,200 square foot building which takes care of the needs of our big trucks. And we'll be reusing one of the two buildings to finish our space needs, which will be very adequate for us. It does the effect of keeping us in the village and keeping the cost down. So yes, we did look at all those options. Does that answer your question? Uh, with, without objection, I recognize Peter again. So the kind of design build project, uh, the, when, you, when it comes to be actually figured out, the 1.3 is locked in, but what you may want, you may not get because of the cost of the project at that time. That's the first question. The second question is the existing uh, firehouse you will use also uh, after this building is built? Without objection, Paul. So the answer to the, what was your first question? I've already been stuck on the second. So the design build project. Yeah. Uh, you don't, you're going you're to have to tailor that to your $1.3 million budget. Correct. We have to live within the reality. That's like everybody. You only got a certain amount of money. That may mean that some cost decisions have to be made, depending on how things go. Uh, we've had some good donations to get us to where we are. We had somebody donate the, the tearing down of the old building and the, the site work you've seen. So there's been some, some good investment. Um, I would say we're in the 200,000-ish territory between real money and work and services, which we, we've done so far, and we we'll continue to do that. Um, and what was the second question? My brain's bogging, you sir. Have, you have, you have existing, you know, fire. Well, we have to use one of the other two buildings in order to meet our space needs. We feel that that is adequate we can do that because we're only storing our trailers. Our, so we wouldn't be building storage space over there. We wouldn't be building space for our trailers. We have space that's adequate for that in one of those other two buildings. We're just not sure which one yet. I'm, I'm liking keeping the one that has water and sewer in it, but you know, we'll make those decisions as we move forward. Um, that's how we reduce the cost of this building. We did like that existing fire station on, on, on Main Street here in 14 is about 1,700 square feet. So we didn't have to pay to rebuild that. That the day, so we, you know, that's how we got where we got. We feel we can manage that and keep the cost where it's somewhat reasonable. I saw Chuck raise his hand first without objection. We'll make another remark and then I'll recognize the next So, week. looking at this fire station that's down here, the existing fire station now, looks like that needs a lot of work. So, in two years, you're going to come back and we're going to have to. Bring that fire station up to to, it, to standards, new sides, new windows, and all that stuff. Okay, without objection, Paul will answer. Absolutely, yes. It needs some work. Um, yeah. Our plan is we've had a lot of people say we want to raise funds, we want some community involvement. Our idea for that building, if that's 
that's the one we end up keeping is exactly that. that. This would be done through work in time, donations, and town people stepping up to the plate. If I've heard a lot of that input, why can't, why can't the town folk work on this? The answer is yes, they can. Building that big building is going to be tough. 16 foot walls and 40 foot trucks is not a good job. But this is a project where local people, when we get to do it, it probably wouldn't be until the other building was done, get to step up to the plate and say, hey, I'll donate some siding, or I'll come and put siding on the building, or I'll change a window for you. Because you're absolutely right, it needs some energy upgrade. So it would be done, that would be our plan, is to not try to borrow money for that and try to have it, because I wanted a community invested in this. This is our town's fire department, and it's important to everybody. And I think people would step up to the plate to do that. I've had a number of people say, yeah, we want to we do something like that, and that would be their opportunity. But, Andre? Yeah. I recognize this gentleman. Please state your name. Norm Edgett. I just want to um, put forth a few comments. One, um, now it is a big hit, of course, but you know the, the, the fire department now is doing so much more than they used to, and I think it, um, it's a question of uh, you know uh, getting what you pay for. You know, but it was just the fire department we used to have, which was did a great job, of course. And um, that's one thing, they do so much more, there's so much, so much more capabilities. They, I did some work with them, they really do need this station, but they have it totally inadequate. And, uh, you know, I support this. The, uh, um, as to the cows question, I remember way back when, when Grady Hill and Ken King and myself met with cows to arrange for that deal to do a third of operating expenses, which has worked really well ever since. And it, uh, it was a fair deal, and it's uh, based on the order of folks that the fire department presents, and um, it worked really nicely. I've spoken with some Dallas people that are, uh, about this, and they feel that, yes, they have the responsibility to pay their fair share. They decided a long time ago not to have their own fire department. They benefit from the great service that both the very company provides. And as, uh, as Chance mentioned, they're They've got 90% of the goal, which is, you know, good luck getting 90% of anything you can work with. So, yeah, I, I supported it. It is a big hit, but we, we get what we pay for. And, and, and the reason it is what it is is because of all the volunteer work that's put into it, both for Woodbury and Cal. So, you know, I appreciate that. And we'll work with it. I recognize you. Please state your name, Stan. So, based on what you're saying about Calus, this projection of what it'll cost annually really would be 30% less than what this figure is. Would be about, yep. Yes. It would be about 33% because they actually pay a third, not 30%. I just spoke earlier. They pay a third of the operating cost. We put this out there for total transparency. I don't want Calus to back out in five years and people go, we didn't know it was going to cost us this much. So that's why that full amount is in there. We would like to think there's going to be some cost savings below that once we can move this into our operating costs. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Yes, I recognize Diana Paduzzi. I have a fairly simple question. If you get started next spring, do you think it'll be done in a year? It's a six month. Six yeah. Months? Oh. <laughs> they, they, they told us four to six months construction time. I would try to avoid building in the winter for obvious reasons. Cool. Whether we get started and they stop and start, I don't know. We'll see where that goes. Yes, I recognize this gentleman, Mr. Martin. Uh, Robert Martin. Uh, I was wondering if you were looking at the GC, the general contractor, you see all the projects you fired this up. Objection, Paul, or Chant? So it's it's design build, which means you do the design as you construct it. Um, most forms of building now are through construction management. Essentially, they do the work of organizing and getting all the subs in. You understand? They, they really no general contract as much anymore. Most everybody is what they call um, construction management. They essentially just oversee all the work. So if you were to hire like an EF wall or something, that's essentially what they're doing. We obviously would have to oversee what they're doing. That would be our job. Yes, uh, without objection, Chuck has another remark. If you get your vote and build that fire station in there, what will 
would be the distance from the front of the fire station to this, uh, Route 14? Yes. To the center? Yeah. yeah. To the edge? The edge, I think, is 60 feet. The apron's going to be 55 feet. We've gotten a variance from the Zoning Board of Adjustment for, I think it's 70 feet. The setback. The, the setback is required for 75. We're at like 68. 68. But we are further back than the original building was. So right. we're, we're less. We're less in violation of the order, and we went through the zoning board of adjustment to get that, that approved. You can look at the plan if you'd like. Well, my point is, getting those trucks in there must be, the double cap trucks got to be 40 feet. Yeah, we have enough paper. We made sure of it. It's a lot nicer than what we currently have because there's a lot of traffic and people that I'm really nervous about there. Um, yeah, we'll be on our own, we'll be out of the. You know, there's a hill we got to cut down a little bit, there's fires, and there's stuff that's got to be done. But we got to get a highway access permit, and it is stopped because it's perishable. They don't want to get yeah, it and then have to redo it. Yeah, I understand that. I just didn't know what yeah. the footage was. I think that the apron's 50 to 55 feet, with the truck, the longest truck is 30 feet. Yeah. Because it wouldn't be good to have a no, bumper on No, we agree. No, <laughs> we wouldn't have done it otherwise. I figured. Ah uh, yes, recognize this woman. Please stand and state your name. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Could you pause for a second? State your name. Okay. We have we have a motion to call the question. Is and the motion is made by I'm, I'm sorry. The name. Your name. Rose Riley. Rose Riley. Thank you. We have, no, 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 voice pays off. <laughs> we have a motion to call the question, to cease debate, and move directly to a vote. Is there a second? I second vote. Okay. Susie Graves. Susie Graves seconds. Okay, we have a motion and a second to call the question. And the question is, shall debate cease and we move directly to a vote on Article 1? Two-thirds two -thirds, two -thirds is required to pass this motion. There's no debate, no amendment. So we will conduct this vote by a showing of hands. Excuse me? No, okay, so I'll clarify. The vote we're conducting now in this motion is to cease debate and then move directly to a vote on Article 1. This is not a vote on Article 1. It's whether debate should cease and we move directly to a vote. Okay. So I'm going to ask the tellers, two tellers each, uh, from, from including the town clerk, the Board of Civil Authority, the Justices of the Peace, two on each side, and we will we will count the the vote of raised hands. Okay. Two on each side, just to verify. To count the hands. Okay. So. Okay. Those in favor of ceasing debate and moving directly to the vote on Article 1, please raise your hands. Do we have to count? Okay. We got two thirds each. It's okay. It's it's apparent to me, and I need to I need to 
you say, those opposed, please raise your hands. Okay. Okay. It's apparent that the ayes have it. And the motion passes to call the question. So we will move now to a question, to a vote on Article 1. I'll state the article and the question at hand. Shall the town appropriate up to $85,000 to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department, Inc., for the purpose of financing the cost for construction of a new fire and emergency operations center at a total cost of $1,000,000 $300,000. If you, are there any questions about the effect of this vote? Yes, you have a moderator, Michael Glenn, yes. request a paper ballot. Okay, a paper ballot would be in order after a voice vote. Yeah. No? Okay. 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 I'm hearing a challenge to that that ruling. I will. I will conduct. I will conduct a paper ballot. Yes. We have a question. You need seven votes, or you should request a show of hands. Thank you. In order to conduct a paper ballot, we need seven requests. We have one. It's clear that we have more than seven requests for a paper ballot. So, we will have the town clerk, board of civil authority, and justice of the peace conduct a paper ballot. Okay, the town clerk Robin is going to report the results of the tally of the vote. 97 votes were cast. We needed 49 for adoption, 70 for the motion, 26 against one stale illegal vote. So the motion has passed. has passed. Article 1 is adopted. was 97. In order to pass the motion, we would need 49 for. The votes for the motion were 70. The votes against were 26. And there, were, there was one deemed illegal vote. It was unintelligible. So, I repeat, Article 1 is adopted. Okay, so there's there's one more article, to, and that's the article to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. We, have a, we have a motion made by Mr. Batchelder to adjourn. Is there a second? 